Okay, so it's Thursday. The video that I uploaded last was actually from Wednesday, which was uploaded on a Thursday. Just to clarify any confusion. Um, so I talked with my buddy last night and I came to the conclusion that I was going to go out and buy some plastic gauge. Um, I never actually have physically myself used plastic gauge. I've always used the micrometers and the bore gauge. And um, the last time that I did use it actually was with my dad. I built an engine like a long time ago and I actually watched my dad, you know, use it and stuff. And um, kind of one of those moments where you, oh, you always remember. And, and that was a, my last experience. Actually, I was building a small block Chevy 350 back in high school. My dad was helping me and uh, we used plastic gauge. Um, and I had seen him use it in the past. He he built a, a six cylinder engine for his Toyota 4Runner and that was a fucking nightmare of a project. Actually, it wasn't even a project. It was like a, a car that he, he really liked that just bad luck with that car all around. But either way, uh, I went and got some plastic gauge. Um, because I have, um, I guess, how can I say this? I have questioned my work enough to go to something as I guess most people would call archaic, right? Like this is by no means is the plastic age scientific, but it works. It, it gets you in the ballpark, right? And... I am doing this just to make sure that I'm not crazy because I have to question when, when you come across these issues, at least for a hobbyist like myself, I'm not a professional. I have to question my work with a certain level of honesty to where it's like, well, maybe it's the way I'm measuring. Maybe it's the way I'm setting up the tool. I don't know. You know, I did work in a machine shop for a little bit, but it wasn't, you know, years, you know, of experience with measuring tools. So, you know, and I don't use these tools every day. So I have to question my work with a certain level of honesty to where it's like, okay, let's check in with the plastic gauge and see where we're at. Because this is like the foolproof way for the hobbyist, right? So you got your, you measure your crush, right? You got one, one and a half, two, three. So what we're going to be looking for is we're going to be in the one range, and if we're even in the one range or wider, then that supports what my measurement was, correct? At least the way that's the way I think. And I went back and I checked a lot. And at this point, we found the fix. It's a set of bearings, which even if we are within one thou, we, we need more clearance. So we need that extra thou, in all honesty, for this kind of engine that I'm building. So um, I'm going to loosen this all back up, take the girdle off. And we're going to put the crank back in. I'm going to clean up a couple things because it's got assembly lube and you should be doing this dry. So uh, you do not rotate the crank ever dry. You just lay the crank in there. You put your plastic gauge strip across and then that's it. So uh, we're going to go from there. And also you guys might see that you got a half groove bearing. The top shell is solid. So... Uh, you don't have to worry about that notch uh, when you're using your plastic gauge there. So I'm going to do this. And actually, my wife is picking up dinner. So she's pro actually, she just texted me if I wanted a drink from Chipotle. And oh, she sent me three texts. Okay, so I should get off of this shit and then text her. So either way, um, I'm going to get this loosened up, get the crank laid in. And then probably by the time I'm done with this, it's dinner time. And then I can get back to measuring pistons, rods journals all that fun shit and i'll follow it up to, with you guys um i hope you guys are enjoying this if there's anything you would like me to address that you would like attention paid to let me know again i'm not a pro there's a lot better information out there but i'll do my best i'm just a fucking crazy dude who does shit in his garage for friends for myself you know this shit you guys have seen it i'm not a pro i like to make things work though so i'll let you guys go Okay, guys, so I put the plastic gauge on there, and according to the plastic gauge, we're at like a thou and a half. So I went back, and I said, something's off here, and I think it's the bore gauge. So you know what? 
I changed the dial indicator. I had another one, the one that I used for degreeing my cam. That's a one inch throw. And, um, and guess what? Dial and a half. So the plastic gauge saved us like 90 bucks. Assuming that we were off by a thou. And it would have put us like a half a thou a little on the loose side. But, you know, but again, you have to question your work. And I'm being honest with you guys here. I had to question my work. And I had to question the bore gauge, you know. So I changed the dial indicator to a different one I got. And guess what? Bang on in a thou and a half. Now, it's still a little on the tight side, but we should be good according to a lot of stuff I've read. It's been a line honed. Everything's pretty good, so I'm going to talk with my buddy, and if he's good with it, then we're going to roll with it. But there you go. Question your work. And I'm glad that I went out and bought $10 plastic gauge and put it on there. Actually, it was less than that because I bought some uh, electrical tape too, so I think it was like 6 bucks for some plastic gauge or something like that. And um, and I did it twice just to make sure. And uh, on our board gauge... One and a half with a changed out dial indicator. So question your tools, question your work. There is no pride here because guess what? It's going to hurt your pride even more if you fucking blow it up, which hopefully the rest of the build continues to go good. So, um, you know, so I question my work. That's the most important thing anybody out there at home can do. And, you know, after putting the... You know, the plastic gauge on there, I was on a quest. And luckily, the first thing that came to my mind is that that board gauge is off because I know that micrometer is not off. That micrometer is a really good brand, and I know that thing is on. So, did it again, did it again, boom, we got it. So, I think we're good, guys, from here. I'm going to measure out the pistons, measure out the rods. If anything else comes up, I'll let you guys know. But I think from here, we're solid. All right, guys, we're on a little bit of a different end here. We're facing the opposite end of my garage. And um, so if you look here, this is the paperwork for the pistons. So uh, piston clearance, that's piston to wall, uh, for a bore size of a 4.0 to 4.199, which these are 4.040s. It says a minimum of 2,000, which would be really tight for this type of piston. And five maximum which is kind of where you really want to be from everything i've uh, kind of done with forged pistons um they have a different series that will allow you to run more piston wall clearance but i assume it's a different uh alloy aluminum whatever it tells you where to measure so half inch from the bottom of the skirt because the skirt does taper just a little bit it tells you about piston pin offset, installation, the spiral ox, and, uh, you know, so again, it's really good. You know, the terms and conditions, uh, you pretty much uh, do one burnout, and, uh, you avoid the warranty. So, uh, yeah, our rod, rod bearing clearances are at 2,000, and um, yeah, so everything is pretty good. Um, I did some digging at some reference guides. And so let's say we were building this motor to the 302 boss specs. It calls for 0.019 to point or 0.0019 to 0.0029, uh, rod bearing clearances. So we're kind of on the tight end, but, um, uh, Again, kind of doing the research, it's it really varies. Anybody who builds an engine and asks for advice, you're going to get like six different answers, if not even more, um, about what you should do. But uh, according to what I was reading last night, if the machining is on point, which it is very well on here, actually, everything is very consistent. Um, and we got our, obviously, our measuring devices figured out now. Um, the bores were all like within a couple just very very minute uh differences 
um, nothing major. You're under a half a thou. You're like a tenth of a thou difference between a couple, and that was only like three cylinders, I want to say. So, uh, really, um, if all the machining is good, you can run it on the tighter end, and I think we're going to be good. Um, it's at a thou and a half, um, which according to, uh, I forgot what Ford Forum, a lot of guys agreed that if it's done right, it should have no problem for a street strip for a thou and a half. Uh, factory is eight tenths to a thou and nine tenths. So just under two thou. That's what factory calls for on a stock style, not like the Boss 302. The Boss 302 clearly demands a little bit more as that engine probably was destined to live on the higher end of the RPM. So um, from here, we're going to go ahead and I have to take my piston rings apart mark them, you know, top and middle, and file fit each one to their respective bores. I have to clean the bores up a little bit. They got just a tiny, tiny, tiny coating of uh, surface rust from uh, it. The temperature has really flared here, and uh, this clearly perspirated a little bit. But it's all that takes is literally a little WD-40 on a lint-free rag like an old t-shirt that won't drop any fibers and just clean up the bores and that, that stuff should wipe right off so um stay tuned because i think i'm gonna file fit the rings probably well actually tomorrow i got stuff going on and then i'm buffing the wife's car on saturday so chances are i won't come out of here probably and touch this stuff at least probably until sunday and that way I'll get the rings file fit and then I can put the crank back in and then we can go ahead, degree the cam. And we got to set the end play on the camshaft. We got to measure the connecting rod side clearances still. Um, and then from there, really, I mean, this thing's going to get moving. So uh, stay tuned. So share, like, subscribe. We got new subscribers. Thank you guys for following along. Um, if you guys want to follow other stuff that I do that I don't just do in my garage. Um, you can follow me at uh, Instagram at uh, Copper Cutlass. And on Facebook, I do have a specific page. It's Copper's Garage. Uh, so if you go on Facebook and look up Copper's Garage, it should you should it should it all be just stuff that I do in here. Uh, not my personal page. So uh, thank you. Hit the like button, subscribe button, share. You know, we do coolish stuff, right? So we will let you guys go. Have a good evening and a pleasant tomorrow.